President Biden is calling America's attention back to his plan to rebuild the economy. During a stop in Chicago on Wednesday, the president touted the success of his so-called Bidenomics, highlighting a declining inflation rate and steady job growth. Let's go ahead and break down Bidenomics right here, what it all means for the country. Joining us now live is Justin Wolfers. He's a public policy and economics professor at the University of Michigan. Justin, uh, great to see you today. Um, so the president rolling out this plan, calling it Bidenomics. What is Bidenomics exactly? Is this a repudiation of Reaganomics? It's um, President Biden basically trying to make the case that there's an underlying theory of the case for everything his administration has been doing. So it's it's not a new invention, but it's think of it as a relabeling. And I think um, you know the president talks about it very much as being a culture of investment, um, investment in infrastructure and in people. The language the administration uses is they call it um, bottom up and middle out. That's a, a claim, an argument that he cares a lot about inequality as well. Um, and also uh, paying real attention to making sure that there's competition in markets. Uh, markets are a central part of our economy, um, but they also need a little bit of help sometimes to work well. I want to ask you how you think the economy is doing right now. I mean, how do you think Americans feel about the economy? We know that consumer confidence has been higher lately. It's the highest since the pandemic. The jobless claims that we've seen ticking, they haven't really ticked upwards. GDP was just actually revised upward to 2%. So what do you make of the economic prints that continue to come out? Is there strength in the economy? actually a much more complicated question than might meet the eye. Um, let me tell you, first of all, how it hits my eye. The reason I became an economist is because I cared deeply about unemployment. I think an economy that doesn't deliver jobs for everyone saps the soul and leads to so much suffering. And so the thing I'm most excited by is that the unemployment rate is currently at or around a 50-year low at levels that we previously said just weren't possible or weren't sustainable. So score that as a big win. I say it's a little more complicated than that because for uh, the last year and a half, every time I open a newspaper, every time I do a TV interview, someone says, well, what about a recession? Is the US currently in a recession? I'm like, crikey, it doesn't look like it's in a recession. Unemployment's at a 50 year low, yet still we keep ask, asking. And there's been a real drumbeat of uh, recession talk throughout this. And it's only over the past month or so that finally people are waking up and saying, hey, this isn't a recession after all. But what we do see is that not everyone's happy about what's going on. And one part of that is they may have a job, but inflation's high. And that really is undercut. Um, you know, the cost of living has been very difficult for many of us. I want to say one more thing. If you ask people how the American economy is doing, they say, pretty badly. Ask them how their family is doing, and they say pretty well. And I think that it might be more informative to ask people how their family is doing, because then they're looking past their partisanship and actually reporting on what's happening in their household. Uh, regardless, the president really is owning this, calling it Bidenomics. I want you to go ahead and take a look at this poll. To your point, despite the gains that you're talking about that exist in the economy, historically low unemployment, only 43% of Americans approve of how the president is handling the economy. So, Justin, where is this disconnect happening? How should the president be messaging this? I think one part of the disconnect is he hasn't sold his story, and that's exactly why... He's invented this new word, Bidenomics. He wants people to, to actually assess how things are going. Look, he began his term during a global pandemic and life was pretty awful for all of us. Um, his ability to make policy choices then was tremendously constrained. And so moving away from the pandemic to what does the Biden uh, term really mean? And, um, you know, he's, I'm sure the administration's very proud of their performance on jobs, on the fact that, Today, the economy is exactly where we all thought it would be before the pandemic. And it's as if the pandemic hadn't happened. I think a big part of the story they haven't told enough of yet is in fact that inequality has been falling over recent months. And I think part of the reason they've been afraid to boast is when inflation was high, that felt a little unfeeling. Well, inflation has now fallen by half. And I think they start to see that they've got the economic wind in their sail. And when that's, tr when that's what's happening, it's time to let out that big colorful spinnaker that lets everyone know that you're sailing and they've decided to call that colorful spinnaker Bidenomics. So 
who is getting this wrong? I mean, where does the onus fall at this point? Is it on the media? Is the media getting the messaging wrong? Is it the president? The president's been getting his messaging wrong. And, and how is this going to factor into 2024? Will this plan bode well for voter support in 2024? So I want to tell you who's getting it right. As an economist, who gets it right is the hard data, the actual numbers. When we survey uh, tens of thousands of people and ask them if they have work. We learn that uh, unemployment's at a 50-year low. When we survey hundreds of thousands of businesses, we discover that they're employing people at gangbusters rates. When we look at the number of people filing for unemployment claims in offices all across the country, we discover that low layoffs are around about a 50-year low. So the hard data is always right. What's not always right is the occasional stories we tell. Um, one thing we've seen is job losses in the sorts of industries that people in the media tend to have friends in, for instance, in tech or in finance. Um, we have, you know, these billionaires in Silicon Valley who uh, are pretty comfortable letting out hot air on all sorts of things they got no idea about. So I think there's a lot of nonsense out there. That's why I want to keep bringing you and your viewers back to the hard data. And, you know, it's honestly a question for political scientists, not for me. Is it the White House's fault for not telling their story better? Mm -hmm. But I do know what the reality is, and the reality is pretty good. Yeah. All right, Justin Wolf, Wolfer, sorry, we've got to get to a break. <laughs> so thank you so much for being with us. We will be right back.